Grenade by Alan Gratz, part one, pages 38 to 43. Ray, pigs to the slaughter. Down, down, sniper, Starks yelled. Ray scrambled under the wooden fence that kept the pig inside. Pat, another bullet hit right where he'd been lying two seconds ago. Ray flattened himself in the mud. There was a ridge underneath the fence that was just tall enough to hide behind, but no more. He held his helmet with both hands as the rest of his squad crawled under the fence and flopped into the muck beside him. What about hard luck? Starks asked. There was barely room for all five of them behind the little ridge. Dead, Sergeant Meredith answered. He unlatched the bayonet from his rifle, balanced his helmet on top of the bayonet, and slowly raised his rifle above the ridge line. Pack! The sound of the sniper's rifle was quickly followed by the sound of the bullet hitting the helmet. Ping! Ray watched the helmet tumble toward the pig, who was still snuffling away on the other side of the pen. Ray saw the hole where the bullet had gone clean through the helmet. He swallowed hard. Dang, that guy's good, Gonzalez said. Wait, shh, the sergeant said. He waved them all quiet, and over the sound of the pig grunting, Ray heard a sound he recognized from his hunting days. Bolt action, Ray whispered. Sergeant Meredith nodded, and Ray felt a quick lick of pride, like he'd answered a question right in class. He has to manually chamber a new round every time he fires, the sergeant said. That gives us a chance. You think you'd recognize that sound again? He asked Ray. Ray nodded. All right, Gonzalez, Big John, get those bars ready to go. Ray, next time you hear that sniper shoots, I want you to get over that fence and run to that well on the other side of the road. We'll lay down cover fire for you. You hide there, and the next time you hear that bolt action, you chuck a grenade at it. Got it? Run across an open road with a sniper out there? Ray's breath came quick. He felt lightheaded, but he nodded. He wriggled out of his pack, pushed his helmet down on his head again, and gripped his M1 rifle so hard his knuckles turned white. He would do it. He had to do it. This was what he'd signed on for, after all. Why he'd left his home in Nebraska. He remembered how his father had argued with him, forbidden him to go. You've got a deferment from the government, his father had shouted. You don't have to go, and we still need you on the farm. I just, I gotta do my part before the war ends, Ray had told him. There hadn't been a whipping this time. Ray was too old for that. It was hypocritical for his pa to protest anyway, and they both knew it. Ray's father had done the same thing when he was Ray's age. Run off to join the Marines to fight in the Great War. And they both knew the real reason Ray wanted to leave home. The long scar on his left arm peeking out from his shirt sleeve was all the reminder Ray needed. Peck! A bullet hit the mud with a thwack a half an inch from Big John's foot boot. Jump in Jehoshaphat! Big John yelled, wiggling his legs up closer to him. But Ray was already leaping over the fence. His feet hit the ground with a thump, and he ran like blue blazes for the protection of the stone well across the road. The well had appeared closer before, but now it looked like it was a half mile away. Stay low. Run like hell. Behind him, Gonzalez and Big John opened up with their big browning automatics to create cover fire for Ray. choo 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 chung choo 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 chung The guns chewed the ferns and palm fronds along the bank into shreds. Ray stumbled, but kept his feet, desperately trying to remember how long it had been since the last sniper shot. Three seconds? Four? How long did it take him to chamber a new bullet after he'd taken a shot at a deer? Ray made it across the dirt road and threw himself at the base of the round well. The bar stopped firing. Ray's chest heaved, and he struggled to catch his breath. No time to rest, though. He dropped his rifle and fumbled for a grenade, his hand shaking. He wondered if the sniper had even seen him through all that cover fire. Pacow! A piece of the well stone wall blew up in Ray's face, and he ducked away. That answered that question. The sniper rifle's report was much louder now, much closer. Ray popped up, heart in his throat, and strained to listen for the sound of the rifle's bolt sliding back and forth. He was totally exposed standing there and Gonzalez and Big John couldn't fire again to cover him, or he wouldn't be able to hear the sound of the bolt. Ch-ch-ch! There! Ray picked a spot in the trees he thought the sound had come from, pulled the pin, and threw his grenade toward the green hillside. He dropped down and grabbed his helmet to his head. Kathoom! 
The hillside above him exploded, showering everything with dirt and rocks and plants. Hands in the air! Stay where you are! Sergeant Meredith yelled. Ray grabbed his rifle and peeked out from behind the well. The sniper had tumbled out of the ground cover on the hill and was just getting to his feet. Ray hadn't hit him, but he'd flushed him from hiding. Rifle raised, Ray got to his feet and ran at the Japanese soldier. Or was he Okinawan? He wasn't wearing a uniform and didn't have any other equipment. Dang, he's just a kid, the old man said as the others ran up. He was a kid, Ray realized. He was cowering and sniffling like he'd gotten in trouble. He couldn't have been more than 12 years old. Well, there's your first Jap, Big John told Ray. I think he's Okinawan, said Ray. If he was shooting at us, he's a Jap, Big John said. So do we take him prisoner, Ray asked. I've got my Japanese phrase book, Sergeant Meredith shook his head. We can't take prisoners, kid. We have to keep moving. Ray didn't understand. But what about the support services for Okinawans? That's for refugees, the sergeant told him. He's an enemy combatant. You want to do the honors? Big John asked Ray. You flushed him out. Ray still didn't understand what was going on, and Sergeant Meredith shook his head at Big John. Big John shrugged, pulled out his pistol, and shot the boy. Ray almost jumped out of his boots, but only Gonzalez flinched with him. The others, the ones who'd been together at Peleliu and beyond, they didn't bat an eye. Big John put his pistol back in his holster and clapped Ray on the shoulder. Now, he said, let's take Hardluck's body back and get you to cooking up that pig.